Tonight, a massive fire is burning out of control near Creighton, prompting evacuations across the Manitoba border. Also, businesses in Saskatoon want more help from police to deal with an increase in break-ins and vandalism. Plus, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are two days into training camp and an old foe is leading the way. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Monday, May 13th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for watching. After a very smoky Saturday, we're all watching what's happening with wildfires in our vicinity. There are 11 active wildfires burning right now in Saskatchewan. In Manitoba, hundreds of people have packed up to leave Cranberry Portage near Flin Flon as a massive wildfire burns nearby. Evacuees now anxious, waiting for news about their homes and when they can return. Brittany Greenslate has more. A smoke-choked sky filled with flames. Fire pushes towards the road. It was like the apocalypse. People in Cranberry Portage were on a two-hour standby to leave Saturday night. The situation changed quickly. And then it turned to 10 minutes. And next thing you know, the police are outside saying, you need to leave. So that's what we did. We packed up and we left. The fire is now about 32,000 hectares in size and 1.5 kilometers outside of town. It was uh, very panicky and stuff and, and just worried and about your house. The fire is believed to have started from lightning strikes. It's being fueled by high winds and dry conditions. More than 500 people forced to leave their homes. It's been pretty stressful, i got to be honest. It was very scary. When a forest fire is coming close, that smoke is frightening and you see the orange glow behind it. People packed what they could, hit the road. Many scrambled to find places to sleep. It's kind of like a game of Tetris, right? So you're trying to fit people in. And then we have large families, like we have, we have a family of six in a hotel room with two double beds. Larry Smirch has lived in Cranberry Portage for nearly 45 years and has been through this before. This time, it's more emotional. And the thought of losing his home and belongings hurts more. My wife passed away about a year and a half ago. So when I started talking about collectibles, then I just thought about her. Highway 10 between the community and Flin Flon briefly opened Monday, allowing CBC to get inside the fire zone. Fire crews have been working around the clock, setting up sprinklers around people's homes and properties to ensure their buildings remain safe, while air tankers from Manitoba and Saskatchewan have been fighting those fires from the sky, and crews from Ontario are on the way. Fred Cook came from Tatasquiat Cree Nation to help. Right now we're always doing some hot spotting, and we're going to a hot area, a hot zone, where they just finished bucketing. There is no power. Melissa Lundy and her husband are keeping the gas station running and crews fed. And I started taking food out of the freezer to cook it for the guys. The wildfire is not yet threatening Flin Flon, but cell and internet service has been impacted. Brittany Greenslade, CBC News, in the Paw. Now our weather specialist Ethan Williams is watching the fire situation closely and not just from a safety standpoint but Ethan from air quality too. Yeah we do have air quality advisories in effect Sam for uh, northeastern sections of the province including Pelican Narrows, Cumberland House even as far west as La Ronge and that is of course from that fire we just heard about but also from some fires burning on our side of the border and uh, as you heard 11 active fires right now we are well more than double the five-year average for fires in the province for this time of year. And I want to focus in on the one fire in our province that is out of control at the moment, and this is the Morin Fire. It's near Hall Lake, just west of La Ronge, and uh, the highway hotline is uh, urging caution around Highway 165 as there is quite a bit of smoke in that area. That's why we're seeing that air quality statement. La Ronge Emergency Management saying that there's helicopter support and a sprinkler system in place uh, there, but uh, uh, no evacuations as of this point anyway in that area. The smoke that we saw over the weekend has now moved out of south and central. It'll, it'll continue to linger in the north of the province over the next few days. That's where we expect it to, uh, to come in from and also from some fires in northeastern BC as well. 
The fire risk through the province still quite high, especially in central and northern areas where uh, those fires uh, are currently burning, Sam. I'll have an update on the fires and uh, a little bit more about severe weather coming up in our full forecast. Thanks, Ethan. You're welcome. One man is dead and two people are facing charges in Regina's first homicide of 2024. Police were called here to the 4800 block of Sherwood Drive on Sunday afternoon, just before 2 o'clock. A man found on a driveway had been shot and was seriously hurt. 22-year-old Everett Wolf Robert Orr was taken to hospital but died from his injuries. This morning, police announced that 24-year-old Isaiah James Dustyhorm and a 17-year-old that can't be named under the Youth Criminal Justice Act have been charged with second-degree murder. Police have not said if the victim and the accused knew each other, but investigators believe there is no further risk to the public. Saskatoon businesses are asking police for more help as they deal with what they say is a rise in crime. But as Dane Patterson reports, data shows the crimes businesses are most concerned about are actually improving. In Saskatoon, there have been more homicides, threats and robberies in the first three months of this year than in the same time last year. Statistics show violent crime is up 10 percent. I think the important part of that message is behind every violent crime is a, is a victim of crime. And our role is to reduce the victimization of people who live in our community and who travel here. But businesses say that's not the only issue. They're complaining about vandalism and break and enters in Saskatoon, especially in the north end and in downtown. It's problematic because it seems to be escalating. And so we, uh, we just think that there's something needs to be done that's uh, a change from the current status quo. Statistics seem to show those numbers have improved from the same time last year. 51% fewer non-residential break and enters, fewer instances of graffiti and mischief and willful damage. But Moen believes those numbers are lower because some incidents are not being reported. We know that there are a number of crimes that go unreported because, uh, again, like I said, the property owners, the, the business owners, I should say, uh, find there to be you know, very little use in doing so, and so they just uh, don't bother doing it. There's room for improvement on the side of both the business owners and from police. The Business Association has called for more patrolling and patrolling around later hours. I hear that and I'm listening and uh, as we identify trends we will uh, again be nimble to address those to reorganize if we have to. Today the City of Saskatoon and Saskatoon Police cited several ongoing and new initiatives to address safety in part adding more police uniformed alternative response and community liaison officers before July 1st and the recently announced neighborhood safety intervention strategy in Pleasant Hill. There, officers are meant to listen to residents and create responses. Pleasant Hill and other communities within Saskatoon have a disproportionate number of individuals in need who reside there, who frequent there, who access services there. The city is also beginning an emergency operations center to coordinate the civic response along with police and fire departments when it comes to safety issues. Dane Patterson, CBC News, Saskatoon. A new lab in Saskatoon is going to help police link guns to specific crimes. It's called the Saskatchewan Ballistics Laboratory, and it's now open for business and bullets at the police station. Police say these tools will help fight gun crime. There have been nine homicides in Saskatoon so far this year. Four of them involved guns. Police say the ballistics lab will help them get closer to solving these cases and others. When we do have a, a crime involving a firearm or a firearm has been shot or seized, we're going to be able not only to link that firearm to the actual crime, but it's going to help us link it to other crimes. Saskatoon police recovered 734 firearms last year. They say those guns were used in 148 violent crimes. After a strong contract rejection from teachers last week, there were conversations between the government's bargaining committee and the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation today. Jeremy Cockrell says he spoke with STF President Samantha Beacott. Cockrell says before formal bargaining resumes, the two sides are having informal discussions. He says the government bargaining committee wants to know what the STF has heard from its members over the last couple of weeks. 92% of those members voted, 90% of them said no. Today in question period, the opposition asked the government why it won't agree to binding arbitration. Cockrell says they're not interested. 
we're having discussions this week, uh, looking forward to an eventual return to the bargaining table. I'd like to see, I'd like to see both sides put the work in at the bargaining table. And again, if there's other options that we need to look at down the road, we can we can consider that at that time. But uh, you know, my focus, and I know the focus of the government trustee bargaining committee, is understanding how we can get to an agreement at the bargaining table. In the assembly, Cockrell was asked about including guarantees on class size and complexity in the new offer. He says the government continues to believe that is best left out of the contract and to school boards. As we roll closer to June, members of the LGBTQ community are starting to ready their plans to celebrate Pride. But in Regina, Queen City Pride says members of the Saskatchewan party are not invited to any of it. Queen City Pride has announced it will not be holding the Saskatchewan provincial flag raising at the legislature that proclaims June as Pride Month. It's also banning Saskatchewan party members from attending any festivities, including the Pride Parade. Queen City Pride says the decision was made because of recent action taken by the Sask party government, specifically the introduction and passing of Bill 137, the Parents' Bill of Rights. We made this decision more to help our community feel safe. It's not, we do of course have the message that we're not going to stand for um, provincial parties targeting our, especially our youth, our vulnerable youth, but essentially attacking our community. Um, we're not going to let you pretend to be an ally, join our parade, and then have policies in place that hurt us. Um, but our main goal here is to make our community feel safe. Bonneau says they've received a lot of feedback about general fear from youth in the community. Historically, the Saskatchewan party has had a group that participates in the parade. Bonneau says the only thing that would change their mind would be for the government to apologize and get rid of Bill 137. Minister Jeremy Cockrell says the bill will stay as is and excluding his party members from Pride is disappointing. Regina's Pride Parade is scheduled for Saturday, June 15th. Saskatchewan is getting nearly $28 million from the federal government to build new child care centres. The money will be used on projects in both regulated and non-profit child care centres. The money will come over four years. The federal minister of diversity, inclusion and persons with disabilities says the new projects will help give families access to inclusive and quality child care and should make a big difference. You know, for me, fairness is a promise that fundamentally defines our country. The promise of fairness, the promise of Canada, is that everyone should have the chance to build a good middle class life. And not just to do as well as your parents, but actually do that even better. There's no word on where the new centres will be located, but the federal government says it will consider needs of rural and remote communities and those facing barriers. Land of living skies indeed. We can thank a powerful solar storm that hit the Earth's atmosphere for this stunning display of northern lights over the weekend. Many photographers, both pro and amateur, spent hours outside capturing magical images. A powerful geometric storm meant colorful auroras were seen around the world, including the United States, Europe, Australia and other Canadian provinces. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. The head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders says players are amped up and ready to get the 2024 CFL season underway. Full training camp started on Sunday and head coach Corey Mace says the energy is competitive. Seven rookies were released after rookie camp on the weekend, the majority of them Americans. And at main camp, O-lineman Jamarcus Hardrick is already making an impact. Nicknamed Yoshi, the former bomber, was West Division's top offensive lineman last season. The Riders picked him up for a two-year deal on the opening day of free agency. It's one thing about Yoshi, you know what I mean? He's, he's going to bring that every day. Certainly, I think uh, Schaefer, Schaefer Baker caught a ball. He ran up, gave him a chest bump, and almost knocked him out the stadium, right? So that, that's awesome, man. And that energy, it's infectious. You know, everybody, everybody was feeling, myself included. So uh, we're happy as ever to have Yoshi. The team opened camp without American defensive back Jalen Edwards Cooper. The former BC line was a free agent that they grabbed in the offseason, but he didn't recover from a dislocated shoulder from last season and was released after failing his pre-camp physical. As for the team, they're back at Griffith Stadium each morning this week for camp and they'll host their fan annual appreciation Green and White Day there on Saturday.
The weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln. Truck time is on now. Our weather specialist Ethan Williams joins me now, and it feels early to say this, but I feel like we've seen some stormy-ish, thunderstormy-ish weather. Yeah, we certainly have, and uh, we've gone from, uh, you know, pretty quiet weather picture this last little while to things that are really picking up between the smoke and now uh, the storms and, of course, the uh, the solar storms as well uh, that we're seeing. A uh, couple of storms that we're watching that we're moving through a little bit earlier this evening. Uh, this in the Burstall area, which was under a severe thunderstorm warning, uh, some heavy rain and some hail and some strong winds with that cell. Another cell uh, as well moving through the Valmarie area a little bit earlier earlier today. This continues to move eastward now into the uh, Assiniboine and Gravelberg areas. This whole area of southwestern and south central Saskatchewan, including the Cypress Hills, uh, Swift Current over to Assiniboine and Gravelberg remains under a severe thunderstorm watch this evening. So we'll continue to uh, monitor conditions. You can see that uh, kind of warning or watch box rather just in that southwest corner here as this complex of showers begins uh, to move through. It has been playing uh, tricks on our temperatures as well, getting very warm this afternoon in Cornwall a high of 26 there. It was only 10 degrees, though, in Yorkton. Now that's uh, with some of those showers moving through that area a little bit earlier today. Unsettled is going to be the uh, main word for our forecast uh, this week as we continue to see those showers and thunderstorms move eastward through the south overnight tonight uh, where we really need the rain of course is in northern Saskatchewan we may be seeing a band of that move through Wednesday afternoon and then for south and central we get a couple of good chances of some rounds of uh, showers moving through later into Wednesday Thursday and possibly into Friday as well and that could bring in the range of maybe 10 to 20 millimeters by the time all is said and done once we get into uh, the evening hours on Thursday. And again, really going to be hit and miss here with where those showers kind of uh, pop up. But that low pressure system likely going to be bringing some relief for some of us. And even up toward the south end area, we could see in the range of 10 to 15 millimeters. Again, all of that by about supper hour Thursday. Winds are not going to pick up too much here. We're going to primarily be on the northern side of these low pressure systems moving through. So that means we get the moisture and we don't really see things pick up all that much like we did over the weekend uh, in the province, but still a little bit gusty at times, uh, 30 to 40 kilometers an hour in some spots. So for Regina, we have a chance of some showers popping up tomorrow. Wednesday is the chance uh, that we maybe see some thunderstorms along with that. And then as that low begins to move in, those temperatures drop below seasonal. We get some substantial moisture before things uh, start to stabilize a bit heading into uh, the beginning of next week. Those uh, temperatures, though, uh, not quite getting back to normal. For Saskatoon, again, I think we have about a, a 40 percent chance of some showers and maybe a thunderstorm or two tomorrow afternoon for you folks. You'll probably pick up the brunt of that system, maybe upwards of 20 millimeters by Friday before uh, temperatures are back to just below seasonal heading into Sunday and Monday. So it looks like a, a bit of a showery and unsettled forecast here, Sam, but not bad as we know that we need that rain. Oh, but there is still time for there to be snow in the forecast because it wouldn't be May long without some it weird forecast. Yeah, we, uh, we, we should keep an eye on that. <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. You bet. <laughs> That is a vivid yellow diamond going under the hammer tomorrow in Geneva. Auction House Sotheby's estimates this Cartier brooch could, brooch could fetch nearly $10 million. It's one of the largest diamonds in the world and weighs more than 100 carats. The Alnat diamond is believed to have been mined over 100 years ago in South Africa. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. A teenage singer from Prince Albert is living up to her last name. Rebecca Strong will be performing in the finals of Canada's Got Talent tomorrow night. We caught up with her to find out how she's feeling about her big moment in the spotlight and all that support behind her. I am currently on Canada's Got Talent and I am a finalist which airs May 14th and I need your vote. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so excited. I am, I mean, my, my nerves are skyrocketing, but I'm really trying not to let it take over. The journey has been insane. I mean, it's been very overwhelming, but I am very thankful and very grateful for everything. My entire life, I've been dreaming of this moment. 
It's been crazy. <laughs> Whatever I think I want people to feel with my performance is what I want to say. And whatever sounds best. <laughs> really, it's just, I'm just doing what I do. I don't plan it. Um, I mean, I've been practicing my entire life. I practice every day. So it just comes naturally. make every song my own i'm not i don't want to copy anyone i don't want to sound like someone i want to sound like rebecca strong who sings that song again olivia rodrigo incorrect rebecca strong yeah. sings that song baby it felt really good when she said that um all i want is to not sound like an artist that i am singing i want to sound like me i'm just really thankful that I have so many people rooting for me, especially the Indigenous population. As you know, I am the only Indigenous person in the competition right now. It touches my heart, and I've never felt so much support from so many people. I mean, of course, like, my family and my friends, they've supported me in my entire life, but now I can really see and know how much my music impacts other people. Indigenous youth, I've noticed how much they appreciate my music and how much I inspire them. And I just, it like brings a tear to my eye. And hopefully those are happy tears mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Ethan is back with one last look at your weather. Yeah, best of luck to Rebecca on Canada's Got Talent. And uh, in Regina tonight, uh, temperature-wise, we'll have a little bit of luck, hopefully uh, with some rain showers maybe moving through 10 degrees. Uh, otherwise, looking at partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow morning, though, I think that's when we'll have kind of a chance of seeing uh, maybe some uh, more substantial showers moving through uh, for the morning hours in Regina under cloudy skies. And that continuing into the afternoon, a few showers possible for us uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. For Saskatoon, a bit of a different scenario here. We have uh, the best chance of rain tonight. Tomorrow morning, though, things clearing out, a mix of sun and cloud. Tomorrow afternoon, though, that is when we have that chance of uh, a few more showers and maybe some thunderstorms uh, as well, Sam. A few of those could be severe again, so we'll be keeping an eye out for that. As long as they don't start a fire, I'm good with that. Exactly. All right, thanks, Ethan. You're welcome. And that is it for us tonight. For news anytime, you can head to cbc.ca slash sask. You can subscribe to the CBC Saskatchewan YouTube channel or download the CBC News app on your phone or tablet. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.